welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. You know, it's fall and we're excited to get harvest rolling. And in some cases, harvest is already done. So what do you do to that field getting prepared for next year? One of the things that's growing in popularity across our country is fall applications of residual herbicides for corn and soybeans. We'll talk about some of the options and why you may consider using them. One of the new things that you may consider trying this fall is some fungicide on wheat. We're going to talk about the timing and what you could possibly gain by doing that application. Well, one thing that's definitely not new is troublesome weeds. Like our Weed of the Week, we'll show you how to stop this tough weed. But first, here's this week's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk about land rollers. It's interesting as we go across the country, there are certain equipment trends uh, that have taken off in one area that in another area of the country, it's something brand new. And so wherever we travel, it's, hey, what do you think about this piece of equipment or that piece of equipment? One of them is land rollers and their use has been pretty popular in many areas of the country. With these land rollers, what the whole purpose is, is to basically level the soil out and where we see the biggest gain is pushing rocks down into the ground. So if you're a non-farmer, you might say, oh yeah, why is that such a big deal? Well, if you have crops like soybeans, for example, where you wanna run the combine head right on the ground, it's very easy to pull a rock in. And if that rock gets in the wrong spot in your combine, you may have thousands of dollars worth of damage. That's a big issue. So what the farmer will do with the land roller is go out there in the spring and push all those rocks down into the soil. Then when he comes along with the combine, he can go right down to that soil surface without a lot of worry about those rocks. Well, rocks are certainly a concern and a big benefit of running a land roller. The other thing that I see a lot of guys talking about and having results with across the country is getting good seed to soil contact. For example, let's say you're putting a cover crop out this fall, or let's say maybe you're seeding a winter cereal. By doing Doing some land rolling after you've seeded, you can pack that ground a little bit if it's really fluffy, and now all of a sudden you've got good seed to soil contact. That can certainly be a benefit. A lot of people talk about yield gains by using land rollers, and that all depends on your situation. So for us on our farm, we haven't gained yield, but it all depends on how you set the planter. Like for us, we've invested a lot of money in our planter. We're trying to do the right things there. And for someone else, maybe this land roller helps with your planter to get that good seed to soil or, or contact. Drill, like Brent, or drill, or yes. drill. You know, that's Excellent. one thing where yeah. we see a lot of guys talking about, oh, my, with my drill, I just don't have great seed to soil contact. Yep. The placement is not as precise as using my planter. So that's a spot where a lot of guys are seeing some benefit using a land roller. So what a lot of people will do is they'll typically roll the ground before they plant the corn, or with soybeans, they'll roll the ground after they planted the soybeans. And the whole reason why is because corn is very sensitive about planting depth. We want it at exactly two inches deep. I don't want it at one inch deep. I don't want it at three inch deep. I have yield loss either way. I want it at exactly two inches deep. So if you plant your soybeans and you roll then, soybeans, it doesn't matter. I can plant them at a half an inch, an inch deep. It's no real big deal. There's no exact number for soybeans, but you'll see variance across the field because sometimes that soil is a little bit fluffy. So when you go over it with the roller, well, if you've already planted the seed, you might find that some seeds are pretty shallow, some seeds are deeper. We can't do that with corn. So you have to roll before you plant the corn. And then most people do it after they plant the soybeans to improve seed to soil contact with the soybeans. That's just a number of reasons why you may consider using a land roller, but Brian, probably the biggest topic of debate that we hear is, should I roll it after my crop is up or before my crop emerges? Yeah, so again, with corn, we absolutely want to do it way in advance. With soybeans, there are some people who wait until those beans come up. We worry too much about that, that we're going to hit it at the wrong stage. If you have some plants that are brittle out there, you could snap them off and then those plants are dead. So personally, if it was me, I wouldn't roll after the beans are up. There are some people who do that with good success. Well, one thing land rollers can't do for you is control our Weed of the Week. We'll show you what will coming up later in the show. Regalia RX Biofungicide activates a plant's natural defense system, limiting the effects of disease and improving overall plant health. Regalia RX complements your fungicide program to optimize yield and strengthen return on investment. Ask your retailer for Regalia RX today. 
Precision in grain moisture management can save you thousands in spoilage and elevator docks. The AgriDry Bullseye Controller monitors temperature and grain moisture and is available for all dryer makes and models. Plus, our AD Link feature gives you 24 7 remote monitoring and allows you to control your dryer wherever you are. Call us today for more information. Dried Load Store, 1 855 Agri Dry. We know that the future is liquid. That's how Agroculture Liquid Fertilizer creates the highest quality products on the market. Because we're committed to finding the best raw materials at the best price possible and getting them from us to you in the most sustainable, responsible ways possible. Agroculture Liquid Fertilizers, helping you grow the future. Presenting the new 2016 Apache Sprayer. If you could save money and increase yield, why wait? Delaying change can cost you money. It's phenomenal the return of investment it brings back. In my mind, a sprayer is the biggest return of investment you can bring back. Apache owners apply in half the time for full type, apply when they want versus custom, and spend less than hydrostat owners, not to mention less weight on their crops. Go ahead and compare. We hope you do. Visit etsprayers.com to locate a dealer and how to save with an Apache. Apache, now more than ever. Looking to maximize yield? Quick Roots from Monsanto BioEgg is a microbial seed inoculant that allows the plant root to explore a greater volume of soil, the key to higher yields. Quick Roots continues to generate yield response on corn, soybeans, wheat, and more, and is applied to the seed so the live microorganisms go right to work enhancing seedling vigor, increasing the uptake of certain nutrients including NPK, and expanding root volume. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Get Quick Roots today. Your time is valuable. That's why you need a Hagee STS application system. Hagee STS products are designed for precision and efficiency, allowing you to make applications all season long with just one machine. Contact your Hagee rep today. There are many times during the year you may consider using a fungicide in your crop, but one operation that really hasn't been done very much is using a fungicide in winter wheat in the fall. Many of the applications of fungicides have been timed in the spring and early summer when there's a lot of moisture out there, but fall is an important time too to do everything you can do to have great plant health. For Darren and me, we're always trying to find out what's the latest cutting edge thing, what are a lot of high yield farmers doing, and this is something that some farmers have tried with good success. So you've probably heard about the big plant health discussion in corn and soybeans where farmers are using strobel urine products like Headline or Quadris and they're getting plant health benefits out of that. Well, the same thing can happen in wheat. When you go out and you spray a fungicide in the fall, not only do you have the disease is controlled then, because sometimes we do have some diseases show up in the fall, but also we're getting plant health benefits, and one of those is that plant somehow responds and we get a little bit better winter survivability. So it could be a couple of things here. I mean, yes, there are things happening in the plant internally, but also just having better disease control going into the winter, that's got to be a good thing. So your plant's just that much healthier and it's better able to survive that winter. How much yield are you going to gain? What we suggest is just try some of this out a little bit and then you'll find out yourself. But this is something we're going to do on our winter wheat this fall. We'll run some tests and we'll let you know how they turn out. One of the reasons that some farmers are considering doing this is because of stripe rust. There's stripe rust that has been found to actually overwinter in certain parts of the country. And if you have a mild winter, which we have no idea how the winter is going to be, it just might happen depending on where you're at. Now, I highly doubt it's going to happen in the Dakotas, but if you're somewhere like Idaho, for example, where the, the climate's a little more uh, temperate than here, that might be a concern for you. And if you've got some stripe rust that's out there in the fall, you may want to just wipe it out completely so you don't have to deal with it next year. All right, so the question is, what am I going to use for a product and what am I going to use for a rate? If it was me, what I would do is I'd probably be running a half rate because the plant's really small and I might use a straight strobe. I might go with a headliner quadris, but a lot of people now are using combination fungicides just so we don't have to worry as much about disease resistance. So I'd maybe try both both out, maybe try a straight strobe like a headliner quadris and try out a combination product, maybe even something like Preaxor. You could use Stratego Yield, a number of different combination products that have two different modes of action. All right, so is this going to require an extra trip across your fields this fall? 
No, it doesn't necessarily have to. There are many operations that could be going on in your fields. For example, weed control. If you're looking at winter annual weeds, like cheatgrass, for example, you may be out there already spraying to treat cheatgrass. Well, now you could add a fungicide right in there. And for the most part, the fungicides are compatible with different insecticide or herbicide applications that you're already making in the field. The other piece of good news here is fungicide prices are coming down. So for a half rate of fungicide, expect to invest only three to six dollars an acre. Well, one other thing you may be watching for in your wheat fields and other areas of your farm is our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? For lower costs, higher production, Mandico Agri leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Avoid costly downtime with Twister's ease of maintenance. Its unique Coulter suspension allows it to follow the contour of the field yet remain forgiving in rocks. Our hydraulically adjustable Coulter angles mean you never leave the cab, making residue management easier, more efficient. Spring or fall, the Mandico Twister is the new leader. Check with your local dealer or visit mandicoagri.com. Dirty work pays. That is if your dirty work includes a Soil Max Gold Digger tile plow. Soil Max tile plows feature zero deflection technology. With the only tile plow factory paired with Ag Leaders and Teleslope control system, you eliminate the need for grade calculations and lasers. So make your next investment in a Soil Max Gold Digger. Better yield, longer planting and harvest windows, better water management is all yours with Soil Max. Visit SoilMax.com. What if instead of running test plots on 10 acres, you could test on 10,000? With Farmers Business Network, the world becomes your plot trial. FBN is the independent farmer-to-farmer -farmer agronomic network. FBN connects real data from tens of thousands of fields and provides you trusted analysis on hundreds of seeds, practices, and field performance to maximize your profits. Find out how your field seeds and practices compare today by joining the FBN community at FarmersBusinessNetwork.com. Just $500 per year for unlimited acres. I've been involved in developing new technologies in agriculture for over three decades. The changing times demanded that we develop new and better equipment. Dry powder applications on seed can only be highly successful if they can be easily, effectively, and accurately applied to the target. That's where our company, Changing Times, and CT applicators come into the picture. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, soybean inoculants, or other dry products. Remember, CT Applicators for the changing times. Being a farmer means securing your land and livelihood for the future. Harvest Solutions from Capello USA have the grit to get you there. Our product lines for corn, sunflowers, and forage are designed for efficiency and longevity, preventing harvest loss while minimizing maintenance and downtime. To do everything you can to advance your farmland to the next generation, call us at 855-CAPELLO or visit us at capellousa.com. Capello USA, Italian craftsmanship, American grit. Over the last few years, a lot of farmers around the country have had more weed problems than they've had to deal with in decades. So it's a big concern for everyone and people are asking us, should I be spraying out in my corn and soybean fields in the fall to control weeds? That's what we want to talk about today. Well, whenever we're looking at weed control options, it's nice to use contact killers, but I like to use residual products so I'm not right back out there spraying again. And you may say, well, it's not going to be that long and we're going to freeze and we're going to have snow where we farm okay i get that that's fine but many weeds can get started really early in the spring before you're out in the field or when the field's too wet and muddy to be out there so having a residual product now is going to last you well into the spring if you choose the right product but here's the whole thing if you're going to spray a herbicide in the fall just understand Yep, you can kill some weeds now, you'll kill some weeds early in the spring. To think that you're going to kill weeds late in the spring or all the way into the summer, uh, it really depends on what you're using and how long that residual is. If you're going to spray a product in the fall, we want to spray it pretty late in the season, right before the ground is freezing up. And then in the spring, we want to be able to plant the crop as quickly as we can so we get crop canopy as fast as possible, knowing that, hey, my residual is going to end up running out on me. The other key tip here is don't put a fall residual herbicide or you might flood out next spring. You've got to know what crop you're going to plant, especially if you're 
you're using crop sensitive products. So yeah, there are certain products like Dual, for example. You can use Dual in corn. You can also use Dual in soybeans. So that's no big deal. But let's say you use a product that's only labeled for corn. Well, you better make sure you're going to be able to plant corn in the spring. But the other side of it is just environmentally. We don't want to have ground that's flooded out and then that chemical washes away. Let's talk about some specific weeds. Now I can see when I've got mare's tail, when I've got dandelion. Yeah, there's a number of weeds that I'd be after in the fall. But why on earth would we talk about pigweed in the fall, Brian? Why would we put a residual out there? I'll tell you if exactly why we would talk about this because everybody around the country is fighting pigweed species, and a lot of times it happens early in the spring. Ideally, the point of putting a fall residual herbicide out is we're going to kill some stuff that will germinate in the fall. So yes, I'm all for hey, let's kill our mare's tail, let's kill our dandelions. We talked about that last week. Go with a high rate of Banville or 2,4-D, and you can throw that in with your residual herbicide. I'm great with that. But when we talk about pigweed control, we got a lot of people out there who are interested in, hey, I'm willing to invest more money in better pigweed control. What can I do already starting in the fall? And what's my whole program throughout the year? So a lot of companies, I don't care if it's Valent talking about Valor, FMC talking about authority. Uh, you go over to the corn herbicides, people are talking even Dual, Harness, Outlook, Surpass. There are a lot of products out there that can be used in the fall that all have activity on pigweed. And the point is we want to have good control in the fall, in the early spring, in the late spring, season long. So this is part of the whole program. It's not the total answer, but it's part of the program. That's why we got to talk about it today. All right. Well, when we're talking about these residual herbicides too, the other question that we get is can it be done with fertilizer? Absolutely it can, especially with liquid fertilizer. However, impregnating on dry fertilizer definitely has some drawbacks. Yeah, and the biggest drawback is you just don't have good spray coverage. When you start talking about pellets of fertilizer out there, you're not covering the ground like if you were to spray a liquid. So we absolutely do not recommend that you impregnate this on fertilizer. It's not going to work to the same level. The other thing that we think about, depending on what your carrier is, whether it's water or fertilizer or whatever, is what do you need for spray coverage? What tips do you use? How many gallons of carrier do you need to get a good spread out in your field? Well, the nice thing here is it's fall. Everything else is dead pretty much, so you don't have to worry as much about vapor drift. I'd run with flat fan nozzles, I'd cut your water volume a little bit and I'd go hit it hard with a good strong rate of a residual herbicide and again I'd probably throw in either Banville or 2,4-D depending on what you're going to rotate to. So depending on where you're at in the country, timing is really kind of a big deal too. If I'm talking a fall dual, a fall prowl, a fall treflan or any of these types of things, I want to spray as late as possible and the reason why is so I get the longest residual comes spring. So you have to make a dedicated effort to say, I'm absolutely going to do this treatment if it's something you want to do. And you might even have to stop the combines for a day. You might have to stop fall tillage for a day, whatever it is, but you've got to make this a priority if weed control is what you're after. Well, once again, we are getting a lot of questions about fall residual herbicides. You absolutely can put most herbicides on in the fall. Just understand that you're going to probably want to bump the rate a little bit, but don't worry too much about the cost because remember, you can buy almost all these products cheaper in the fall than you can in the spring anyway. So use a good strong rate, make sure you're spraying it late in the season, and then you want to make sure that you're doing this on ground that you know you're going to be able to plant early in the spring. You do all that, pick the right products, and you should have better weed control than you've ever experienced early in the spring. Then the question is, how quick can you get that crop up and canopied so you control the weeds the rest of the season? Well, that's great advice in corn and soybean fields, but our Weed of the Week sometimes pops up in unusual places. We'll show you how to control this tough weed coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. Farming isn't just in the land, it's in you. Take control of weeds like never before. Enlist builds on the Roundup Ready system combining proven control of a new 2,4-D and glyphosate in Enlist Dual Herbicide. Protect what matters without changing the way you farm. Talk to your seed or crop protection supplier today.
Our weed of the week is Russian knapweed. Oh, Brian, Brian, Brian. You know, there are a lot of tough weed of the weeks that we have. This is one of the tougher ones. And when we think about primary noxious weeds, that means you are required by law to control the weed. So if you say, hey, I've got some of that out back, I hope you don't, because you are required by law to get out there and get it under control. Russian knapweed can really spread. It can be very difficult to control, and it definitely decreases the value of your land. So you don't want to have Russian knapweed around. Many times people say, well, it's not really on my land. It's just on the edge along the water, or it's just on that dike over there, or it's in that fence line. Hey, those are the worst places you can have it. It's difficult to get out there and spray, and you still need to get it under control. And when you talk about these aquatic situations, so it is near a dam or by a lake or a river or something, that's where it's gonna be much more difficult because about your only option is an aquatic label 2,4-D. And how you're gonna do this is you're gonna look at what the maximum labeled rate is on that aquatic labeled 2,4-D, and you're gonna go spray at least three times per year for probably three years, and then you might get it under control. It stinks. You don't wanna be in that situation, but if you are, hey, that's the way it goes. You just have to go spray three times a year for three years, you'll get most of it. Okay, okay, you may say, well, whoa, 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 I don't wanna have to spray. Can't I just burn that ditch or burn that grass that's along the side of the waterway? You certainly can, but what we've seen with Russian knapweed, when you burn off all the top growth, that just stimulates the roots to grow even faster. Think about it. Look at roadside ditches that farmers burn along their fields uh, for, for a number of reasons. One of the reasons they do it is they get much faster growth in the spring uh, out of brome grass and other grasses that may be in the ditch. We see the same thing with Russian knapweed. Burning it seems to be a bad mistake. Yeah, you control what's on top and you don't have to look at it for a little while, but now all of a sudden it comes even faster. Well, tillage is about the same way. So you go till and all you did is cut off roots and now you have a whole bunch of plants because those rhizomes, are, are they survive very well in almost any situation. So here's our advice to you. Don't do tillage, don't do burning, Anything and don't else? look at mowing either. You say, well, right. I'm just going to mow them off. Hey, now you took all the crop canopy that the grass was giving you around that was fighting it off. Now Russian knapweed has an unfair advantage. Yep, so our best suggestion for you, in those aquatic situations, you got to use the aquatic label 2,4-D. But in other situations where it's non-crop ground, pasture ground, something like that, Tordon's the best. Hit it with a good, strong rate of Tordon, and you will wipe out your Russian knapweed. You can do it even in one shot if you use the maximum rate of Tordon. I'm talking a quart per acre. Just go hit those spots. I know it costs some money, but hey, Russian knapweed is going to cost you a lot more money if you don't get it under control. So even if you just see one or two plants out there and you say, well, that's not that big a deal, or it's in a fence line, a really undesirable place, I don't really use that part of my ground anyway, get out there and control it. It will spread quickly for you, and you are required by law to control it. Yep, so Tordon's the best, but just remember, Tordon does kill trees. So if you got trees nearby, if you don't want them dead, you're going to have to go with our plan of three shots per year for three years of 2,4-D. Otherwise, Tordon's the way to go. That's all time we have for this week's Weed of the Week, but Iron Talk is coming up next. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you, and only you, to the information you need most from your equipment, from anywhere, at any time. AFS Connect, only from Case IH. raised a great crop, you've got a large amount of residue to deal with. If you had an uneven crop, you have an uneven distribution of residue in your field. We'll talk about residue breakdown in today's Iron Talk. For us, the biggest residue situation to deal with on our farm is generally corn stalks. For you, it may be different. There are two ways to approach the situation. First, you may consider heavy tillage. Whether it's a disc ripper like an Ecolo Tiger 875 or a chisel plow, you can size and bury a lot of residue in a hurry. There are certainly benefits to this process like a warmer seed bed going into next spring, improved water infiltration, fast residue breakdown, and more. The downside is it doesn't fit all soils and all farm operations. For example, we have some highly erodible soils that require different management. This leads to our second choice, vertical tillage. Whether you use something like the True Tandem 335VT or individual coulters like on a Salford machine, we've had good luck sizing corn stalks in situations where we didn't use a chopping corn head. We've also had success simply stirring up a little soil along with all the biological life in that soil and mixing it with the stalks. Just that little bit of tillage has really helped speed up the breakdown of residue and helped with flowability through our planter in the spring. Of course, you could try different things like adding humates, manure, or commercial fertilizer to the residue in any tillage or no-tillage program to speed things up. 
in the northern U.S., our experience has been that unless you can do this in late September or early October, we typically don't get enough heat to really get a significant amount of residue breakdown without some form of tillage. So what works best on your farm to achieve good breakdown of tough crop residues? Join in the discussion by calling us on our Ag PhD radio show each weekday at 3 p.m. Eastern on Rural Radio, Sirius XM Channel 147, or you can find us on Twitter or Facebook. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. With the success of the Case IH Tiger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track tractors, it's no secret why Case IH is the leader of the track. So it wasn't surprising when the competition started imitating us. But only Case IH offers a five axle design to give you a smoother ride, more power to the ground, with less berming and compaction. Still, we're flattered. In fact, if we weren't already red, <laughs> we'd be blushing. When we use agriculture liquid, uh, we'll usually end up with 2.7 to 3 pounds a game per animal a day. We had a 100 head out on a pasture this last fall that gained at 2.7. You know, they made about 450 bucks. We usually get about a 10 day start. It's ready 10 days early. And we're grazing and they're waiting and we're gaining. Farmer's attention to detail is what makes the difference. You take the time for service management because you know how vital it is to your operation. You service your field like everything else because soil sampling makes all the difference and gets the results you want. Download the app Soil Test Pro and start grid sampling today. Keep your farm growing strong. The more you test, the more you know. There are no marks of conflict lining this landscape. No echoes of economic hardship, just the unmistakable murmur of Mother Nature's hand. In the perennial quest to outperform, ensure your crop gets the nutrients it craves with a Vail Phosphorus Fertilizer Enhancer. Nothing helps protect your investment more so you can grow confidently no matter what comes your way. A Vail, hold your ground Presenting the new 2016 Apache Sprayer. If you could save money and increase yield, why wait? Delaying change can cost you money. It's phenomenal the return of investment it brings back. In my mind, a sprayer is the biggest return of investment you can bring back. Apache owners apply in half the time for full type, apply when they want versus custom, and spend less than hydrostat owners, not to mention less weight on their crops. Go ahead and compare. We hope you do. Visit etsprayers.com to locate a dealer and how to save with an Apache. Apache, now more than ever. What if instead of running test plots on 10 acres, you could test on 10,000? With Farmers Business Network, the world becomes your plot trial. FBN is the independent farmer-to-farmer -farmer agronomic network. FBN connects real data from tens of thousands of fields and provides you trusted analysis on hundreds of seeds, practices, and field performance to maximize your profits. Find out how your field seeds and practices compare today by joining the FBN community at FarmersBusinessNetwork.com. Just $500 per year for unlimited acres. Take a look inside any rotary combine and you'll find single rotor technology. Technology Case IH introduced over 35 years ago with the Axial Flow Combine. But unless it gives you more bells and whistles with fewer belts and chains, more power using less fuel, it's not an Axial Flow. Because while the heart of every rotary combine beats red, only Case IH gives you the power to do more. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. On your farm, you need speed and year-round effectiveness in your tillage program. The Quick Till from Norwood Sales allows you to move quickly through your fields, maximizing time and improving yield. Constructed of heavy-duty materials, the Quick Till is ideal for both spring and fall applications, from preparing a healthy seed bed early in the season to breaking up corn residue after harvest. For more information about how a quick till can improve fields on your farm, call Norwood Sales today. That's all the time we have for today's show, but if you're looking for more agronomic information, we invite you to tune in to the Ag PhD radio show each weekday at 2 p.m. Central on Sirius XM channel 147. That's the Rural Radio Channel. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and much more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD.
No one cares more for the environment than family farmers who plan to pass their land down to their children. These same farmers are working to double yields over the next 15 to 20 years to feed the growing world. To learn how they plan to do it, visit rnmf.org.